the most wonderful time of the year. For the moms. <laughs> for some of us, for some of us. Back to school for four counties, St. John's County, Nassau, Flagler, and Baker. Oh, five, actually, Duval starts back today, too, right? No, that, no that's, oh, that's week. Next, yeah. week. next week. Next week? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I, Some mom at home was like, sorry. oh! So, so we, only hear, we only hear blunders going in four, <laughs> four different counties right now. All right, so it is back to school. And, yeah, we get it. It means different things to different people. For some people, it's, it's sad, it's nostalgic. For others, it, it matters not. And it could just be more traffic, or but for some of us, it means, it means like when you get home from the day, someone's not late waiting for you, wondering what we're going to be doing today after you've worked all day. So anyway, everybody has something different, but you guys got all some of the kiddos off. Yeah, and yesterday they had orientation, and we have some video of it here, which is a great opportunity for the kids to meet their teachers, find out where their classrooms are, and then drop off all those supplies because over the last week we've been trying to, you know, grab everything and put it together and make sure that we, uh, you know, drop off everything, you uh -huh. know. Then here's something that I learned, too. You get a list of what to buy, and then when you introduce to your teacher, you get another list of right. additional things to buy. And then there's a picture of Kyle and his teacher. And then uh, right when we were done with there, we walked on over to Reed and his teacher. They both have really sweet teachers, so we're excited about it, and they're excited about it. It makes life a lot easier. And then you know, still when they get two excited. boys at home. Still yes, two boys hanging out at home. Still two at home. And then there was a little... Uh, a little kicker to this. We didn't realize that school pictures were yesterday. That's right, for orientation. And you can really? see our kids up there, uh, and they took their pictures. And we didn't dress them up. They looked like yeah, maybe a step above pajamas. They were in their active wear. And I didn't really comb their hair. But um, yeah, it turns out it's actually pretty nice to do because we got pictures out of the way. Yeah, yeah. But we were looking, we we're like, oh, we thought these were like ID type pictures, but no, those are school pictures. So wow. surprise. <laughs> yeah, I don't wow. know if my kids are camera ready. Yeah. But yeah. And, and your little girl went on. Well, off. today was her first day of third grade. So there's a picture of us and started off a little rough, but she got to see all of her little friends, that whole mm -hmm. group right there. They're all in the neighborhood. There's so many kids in the neighborhood, but they're all kind of in the same area at school. So she's already looking forward to walk in the class with everybody and so it was super cute and it was super fun and I'm hoping that she has a great third grade year and uh, please let's have a great first day to kick it off right. It's so important right mm -hmm. that first day it sets off the entire year. It really yeah. does but no pressure. So, <laughs> so uh, I want to show you a picture this is my girlfriend Brooke she is adorable and this picture was taken a couple of years ago but she reposts it every year on the first day back to school she's just expressing all the joy in all of our hearts <laughs> when the kiddos leave for school. And then uh, I also was uh, able to see this picture. I wasn't there for this. I was you know, at the radio station when the girl child, Chloe, went off for her first day of 10th grade. And um, of course, we had a long discussion last night over what to wear. So I think a long that's discussion. Oh, a very long discussion because it's so important. she's on. Yeah, it was hugely important in discussing what to wear. But this is what I've obviously was chosen. So I guess my choice didn't <laughs> <laughs> didn't make the cut. That's okay. There's plenty of time. Yeah. For that. And then the older kiddo goes away to college next week. So I'm uh -oh. sure we'll have a therapist on him to get me through that. And we asked you also to show us your back to school pictures of your little ones. Uh, either your kids or your grandkids and so you know we see this young man looking good and about to go to eighth grade big man yeah. last year before you go to the big school <laughs> and this and this lovely young lady here off to a great day we can tell there's learning afoot yeah. by looking at that and one more to go and uh, and the teacher involved there, so it's just going to be a, a great school year. I can feel it in my bones. You can feel it in your bones. Yes. <laughs> well, when you got weather like this, it does make for you know mm -hmm. it's going to be a good day. So you know that means it's going to be a great year. I agree. Again, that first day is so important. Now, other than kids going back to school, what else right now is? In the news, everybody's talking about the Olympics. the Olympics. How can you escape it? I don't know about you. I was up late last night watching everything. I was too. And Phelps showed up. He always shows up. Yeah. He showed up again. He won two more gold medals. That puts him at 25 overall. That is crazy. With 21 gold. Yeah, 20 21 gold. gold. 25 overall. That's a lot of bling. Oh, uh, yeah. I love his pre race face, though. You know, he's got his earphones Ten. on and Phelps he's like, face. oh, yeah. yeah. And then, oh, but did you see in the relay? He actually broke his head cap. I yeah. saw that, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, that could totally mess him up. But they were so far ahead, 
Come on. Yeah. USA. That is, that is and then so just to break down like how the U.S. is doing, here's a breakdown of everything. They won so far nine gold, eight silver, and nine bronze. So the U.S., they're doing some good things. They're, they're showing up. And then locally, we have uh, Caleb Dressel from Clay County. He's competing tonight again to try to get gold. And then Ryan Murphy, he went to bowl school. Uh, again, he's racing tonight as well. So we have a lot of representation locally here. And uh, one more topic I want to talk about, Ryan Phelps. Obviously, he's doing amazing things, but guess what they're talking about now? Him peeing in the pool. Yeah, Michael Phelps, <laughs> Michael Phelps. was asked, he was asked, like, do y'all just have to go in the pool? And he said, yeah, when you're sitting in the pool for two hours, <laughs> you're not going to get up. I guess it's one of those things everyone just knows it's going to happen. So. Well, that, you never did that in just your regular pool? No. That's, that's frowned never, upon? Yeah. Sorry, Eden. Last time <laughs> I was at your house. Yeah, I'm sure there's... Shocking. Gonna, we just, well, shocking the pool. Yeah. That's what we do. We shock the pool. Uh, one that doesn't exist, things, by the way. One of the, uh, one of the studies that uh, is really fun to kind of pay attention to the Olympics about is the study of men and women and how they handle conflict and competition. And a recent study says that men are able to shake it off very quickly and can handle competition much better. They're much friendly to, friendlier to each other, rather, after competing, whereas the women kind of hold a grudge, even if it's just a sporting event. So yeah. I think that's been really interesting to watch to see, you know, the guys with the patting each other in the back and the handshake and the women with a little bit of a stink eye yeah. here and there. So, yeah, so well, that's kind of... You know, and then what about the Ledeck, is her name Ledecky that went off on the Russian? And yeah. so there's a lot of stink eye going on right around there, so. Mm -hmm. But, you know, something else that, that's going on, at this time, a lot of moms are having to go out and run errands with the kids, especially when they're not all in school, so there's right. a few left at home. So we found a list of the top 10 worst errands to run with kids. And number 10 is kids' doctor's appointment. So that's understandable. Uh, I took my daughter for a flu shot, worst experience ever. Uh, the vet. The vet. Yeah. Home improvement store. Uh. You don't like taking the kids out? There's a lot no. of dangerous things there that could uh, happen, you know? So, yeah, I could start see why touching that would be drills yeah, and all yeah, that exactly. stuff. Uh, the DMV, that's horrible for everybody. Yeah, that's, yeah you're right. <laughs> With or without kids, that's a pretty bad experience. Got to bring some entertainment to Toy Store. Uh, buy me this. Try this. You can't get them out of there. My doctor's appointment or yours, you know, and taking the kid for that. Lunch meetings, the grocery store, the bank, and the post office. Yeah. I think some of those should be rearranged. Because, I mean, the post office, how often do you have to really stand there? Christmas. So I have a picture up here. This is my boys. There's three of them yeah. in Target. And they always want that gigantic cart. It's like half car, half cart. Yeah. And you can't turn that thing. You can't make the angles to go down the aisles. But you can see them all hanging. And you're probably wondering, where do you put your groceries? And that's the hard part. I have kids scattered everywhere. So you have to really... You have to have a second cart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Basically, that's what we have to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, we hope that you are celebrating National S'mores Day today. Oh, you didn't know? <laughs> well, we're telling you right now. And we are celebrating here on River City Live, and we have a special guest to help us do so. Chef Damien of Chart House is with us right now. Now, you guys do have s'mores on your menu, but they are Chart House s'mores, aren't they? That, that's correct. It's a takeoff of uh, the uh, creme brulee. Oh. Nice. But we've changed the custard into a s'mores by mixing some chocolate in there. So you don't really have to even know how to bake to make this, um, which is really nice. Some people love desserts, but they're just not really good bakers. Uh, I would like to raise my hand on that one. <laughs> so, but I do think playing with fire is part of this, so I might actually it's not my, raise my hand. My, one of my favorite parts of the job, actually. Um, so what we have here is I've pre-prepared the custard. It's a chocolate egg yolk heavy cream with a little bit of espresso in there. And this is actually marshmallow fluff that we spread right over the top, ah, um, which okay. is a little bit easier than trying to melt marshmallows without burning them. Okay, so and, marshmallow fluff right out of the jar. And a traditional creme brulee um, has a caramelized topping, so we're going to use some sugar. Uh, and I don't know if espresso's in there. There's espresso oh, in there. Uh, yes. so now we're going to have a little fire. fire. And we're going to oh. torch this down really quick till it caramelizes. You can see the color changing. And what's the trick when you're working with a, a flame, a blowtorch? Uh, I know, right? Um, you know, keep your hair tied back and <laughs> don't try to smell the fire. That would be my advice. Don't try to smell. That's don't a good smell idea. the fire. Is there any way to do this at home? Like, is there? Um, absolutely. You can use or? a broiler on an oven. A lot okay. of a lot of restaurants have a salamander, and they'll put it right in there. Okay. Now we're just going to take some chocolate chips and put them right over the top. And at the mm. chart house, what we do is we actually smoke in Ooh. some wood chips. So I don't know if you can uh, smell that. Yeah. 
And it gives it the sensation of sitting over a campfire. Oh, oh. I smell it, yeah. yeah. I smell it. Now, can you take the flame and then melt the little uh, You could, but what happens is when we pump this smoke in there, by the time it gets out of the table and we pull this off, the heat from the smoke will melt those chips really nicely. Okay. So ah. it takes about two minutes. Is there anything else we can melt while we're here? Um, <laughs> I'm sure there is. Um, Somebody had a pyro vein back in the day. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Because this actually, creme brulee, is about one of my all-time favorite things in the entire wow. world. Wow, oh, that's amazing. Like, I think... Oh, ooh, there's chocolate on the bottom. Oh, yeah. Well, this is like a s'more. It really is. It is. And instead of graham crackers, we have some graham cracker mm. crumb that we spread in there to give that... Oh, my gosh. ...graham cracker sensation this there. This is amazing. I like... And this is something, again, you feature at the chart. Absolutely. It's part of our summer vibes um, promotion that we're running right now with this some other delicious. great recipes. Um, we also have prime rib on Tuesdays and Thursdays for $19. That's great. Can't and, beat that. and a great happy hour seven days a week for with appetizers for four to seven. You know what I just found out during my big birthday? What's that? I downloaded my AARP card and there's a <laughs> discount at Chart House. And we take that discount. Yes, we do. You get AARP? Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you just have to be. I'm yeah. going to double dip again, my spirit. 28, Sorry, like I am. Do it. Then... I mean, can I go with you and get in on that discount? <laughs> so I'm pretty yes, sure you can. Really Thank you awesome. so much. You're very welcome. Thanks and for having me. If you would like to learn more about Chart House and uh, how to make these s'mores, just hit us up on our website at rivercitylivetv.com. Click on the SCN on RCL tab. We'll be back. Breakfast of Champions right here. Oh.